Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're going to use the same method, the approximation method or the power method, to find the dominant eigenvector and the corresponding eigenvalue. But what we're going to do here is we're going to also use what we call scaling. Because if we don't, the numbers get to be so large and they don't seem to correspond to one another very well, that it may be very difficult to guess as to what the eigenvector will become, what it converges to. But if we use what we call scaling, then it becomes a lot easier to see what the eigenvector appears to be becoming. So again, we approach it with the same methodology. We're going to multiply this times the presumed eigenvector. Let's start with 1 and 1, and let's see what we get. So this gives us 22 minus 15, which is 7, 28 minus 19, which is 9. Well, there doesn't seem to be much there we can play with. We don't know yet what it's going to converge to, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to scale it. We're going to scale this one down to 1. We're going to take the largest of the two numbers and make it 1, and then find the corresponding value for 7. This can then be written as 1. And if we divide 7 by 9, we get 0 0.78. We're just going to keep two decimal places. That's what we mean by scaling. We take the largest number, make it 1, and then we write the second or third or however many numbers we have as a fraction of that. In this case, 0.78. So we continue. 22, 28, minus 19. And we do indeed use 7 and 9, that makes it easier, as our second vector. All right, so what does that become? I may need the calculator, we'll see. 7 times 22, yes, let's bring out the calculators. 7 times 22 minus 15 times 9, and we get 19. The second one. 28 times 7, and minus 9 times 19, and that gives us 25. Again, notice it would be difficult to see what that converges to, but if we use scaling, it makes it a little bit easier. We'll make the 25, we turn the 25 into a 1 by dividing 25 by 25, and we do the same with 19. 19 divided by 25 gives us 0.76. We're beginning to see some convergence. We'll need maybe one more try to see what this ends up being. So the next attempt, again, we use our initial matrix. And now we replace this by 19 and 25. You can see that a calculator definitely comes in handy here. 19 times 22 minus 15 times 25 that gives us 43. And for this number, we get 28 times 19 minus 19 times 25. And we get 57. Again, you take a look at this and you realize that doesn't appear to be converging to anything. Those are 43, 57. What does that mean? But if we scale it down again, we can write this as follows. Divide 57 by 57, you get 1. Divide 43 by 57, and you get 0 0.75. Now, this appears to be converging to 0 0.75 and 1. If I write one more decimal place, it would be 0 0.754. Now, this appears to be converging to a 3 to 4 ratio. If you multiply the top by 4 and the bottom by 4, this looks like this is converging to a ratio of 3 to 4, and therefore I'm going to go on a limb, not much of a limb, because I think I'm correct here in saying that my eigenvector is probably 3 to 4. So let's go ahead and use that instead of the 4357 on the next attempt. So we get 22, 28, minus 15, minus 19, and the presumed eigenvector 3 and 4. Let's see what we get. So that would be 66 minus 60, which is a 6. And here we get 28 times 3, that would be uh, 84. Let's see here, 28 times 3 minus 19 times 4. So it's this minus this, and that gives us 8. 
And sure enough, this is equal to 2 times 3 and 4, which seems to say that, yes, we have found our eigenvector. Our eigenvector, V, is equal to 3 and 4. And, because that would be considered the dominant eigenvector, and the corresponding eigenvalue is equal to 2. And that's how that's done. Notice again that scaling often gives you a much better view that you're converging than when you don't use scaling and you start using these large numbers here and you begin to realize or you, you don't realize that you actually have a converging ratio and that's how it's done.